to our, an introduction to our fifth session in our series in our Living Hope topic. We have taken quite a considerable amount of time looking at this very, very topic that is very important at the times that we are living in. We have discovered that the book of 1 Peter was written at a time that the believers of that time were scattered. They were going through some sort of persecution. And because of the persecution that they were going through, Peter found it necessary to write a word of encouragement, a word, a word of exhortation in regard to their hope. And he points out about a living hope that is made possible by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have come all through in the last four sessions addressing ourselves on this very matter. And we've come to realize that the believer has a calling. And after that calling, after, after realization of that calling, they are in a journey. And that journey takes them all the way to the point of their hope, to the realization of that hope. And that hope has to do with an inheritance, an inheritance undefiled, an inheritance that is incorruptible and does not um, fade away. The scripture tells us it's reserved in heaven for us. And before that realization, the scripture says, we are kept by the power of God. Even though sometimes we may go through difficulties, the trial of our faith, so that a perfection of that which lies ahead can be realized. And therefore, in addressing all this, last, in the last part of this, the fourth part of it, we realize when it comes to matters of this hope, according to Hebrews chapter number three, verse number six, there is great need for us to hold steadfastly or firmly our confession. And therefore, in holding fast our confession, we are to openly defend this hope. We are plainly to give reasons why we have this hope. And this we draw from the life of Jesus. Jesus openly declared the reason why he had come. He openly and plainly talked about it. So the believers are equally to defend their hope, to talk about it plainly and as openly as possible. And therefore, we found out from the Greek translation of the word openly, and I mean, uh, the, 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 of the word um, uh, uh, confession as having to do with two words, that plain and open talk that equates to boldness. And therefore, we are to be bold in defending our hope, that which lies ahead. This, in the next coming session, that is, uh, that is coming forth, I'll be drawing a topic from my recently published book, and uh, that again is closely connected to that very thought about our living hope. And this is drawn from the book of Titus, chapter number 1, verse number 2, where the scripture says, and I am picking up that, it says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, promised before the world began. We will be working on this to realize that that word as it's used in scripture is actually not supposed to be so. It is not eternal life. In proper Greek interpretation, that word stands for the word age, I mean a life for an age. And we will be looking at the story between Jesus Christ and the young rich ruler. The young rich ruler asked the Lord Jesus Christ, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And we will be finding from the scriptures that eternal life cannot be inherited. And therefore the young man was not asking anything to do with inheriting eternal life. Essentially, eternal life is God's gift that is received by grace through faith. And the scripture tells us that God's gifts are tal and talents are without repentance. So once God gives you a gift, he cannot potentially take it back. Therefore, he doesn't need to do anything to get eternal life. As a matter of fact, from the day you put your faith in Christ Jesus, the, mo the moment you said, welcome Jesus into my life. In other words, the day you cross from death to life, according to John 
5.24, the day you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you received eternal life. So every saved person is in possession of eternal life. And therefore, what the young rich ruler was asking the Lord Jesus Christ had nothing to do with eternal life because he already possessed one. How do I know that he already possessed one? I know he already possessed one because he had kept all the commandments from the time of birth. I know that he, he, he had already possessed eternal life because the scripture says Jesus looked at him and loved him. But then for him to be able to get the answer to his question, Jesus told him to do something, to go and sell everything that he has and give it to the poor and come and follow him. In this next episode, we will be unveiling all that which the young man was asking. I would like you to join me even as we look at this in the next session that is coming in the next uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the next time that we'll be doing this. And please tune in. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching our program today. We hope we have been of ministry to you. We would like to help you grow in your walk with God.